Hey there, welcome over here to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you five of my all-time favorite Christmas cookie recipes. All of these recipes are actually surprisingly easy to throw together, so I really hope you love them as much as I do, but let's go start baking. We're kicking today off with these gorgeous shortbread blossoms. So into this large bowl, I'm adding two cups of all-purpose flour, next an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, one cup of butter, you do wanna make sure your butter is softened, a third a cup of powdered sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and then three tablespoons of milk. Mix this all together until it kind of forms a ball. It will take a few minutes, and then I ended up just forming it into a ball with my hands in the very end. Here is the fun part. This is the sprinkles part. So I have three different types of sprinkles right here. Of course, if you don't want to dip your dough into sprinkles, you certainly do not have to, but it just makes these cookies super pretty, especially around Christmas time. So with a cookie scoop, I just scooped a little bit of that dough out, rolled it into a ball, and then I dipped it into each of the sprinkles. These cookies will bake on 350 degrees for about 13 to 15 minutes. When they're almost out of the oven, I'm going to start on the kisses. So I just have these little kisses right here. I'm unwrapping them and placing them into this little bowl. These little kisses are going to go on top of the cookies after they're out of the oven. So now that my cookies are out of the oven, I am just going to stick each of the little kisses on the very top, kind of pressing in a little bit, but not too hard. After I placed the kisses on top, I let the cookies cool completely and then they were ready to serve. These cookies are absolutely gorgeous. You could bring them to work functions, school parties. You could bring them anywhere just because they are the perfect little cookie. Now we're making these toffee bars and you need to try these. This recipe is unbelievably simple to make and I really, really think you will enjoy it as much as I do. So after I lined my nine by 13 baking dish with parchment paper, or you could spray it with nonstick spray, I put a layer of graham crackers on the very bottom and then I set this nine by 13 baking dish to the side while I worked on the toffee part. Hopping on over to the pot on my stove, I'm adding in one cup of butter. I let the butter completely melt down before I added in my one cup of light brown sugar and a cup of chopped pecans. If you can't do pecans or you don't care for pecans, of course you could just skip the, skip the pecans for this recipe. I brought this up to a full boil and I let it boil for five minutes, stirring it consistently, and then I removed it from the stove and poured it right on top of the graham crackers in our baking dish and then I spread it out as even as possible. This baked in my oven on 350 degrees for about seven minutes. Once out of the oven, it is chocolate time, my favorite time. So I'm just using about four to five of these Hershey's milk chocolate bars just to make my life easy. So I just broke them up into smaller pieces, placed them on top of the toffee layer, and then you do want them to melt. So in order for them to melt, I just placed a sheet of aluminum foil over the top and I let that sit for about 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes, your chocolate should be perfectly melty. So with a spatula, I am just spreading it out evenly. You do want this to completely cool down so the chocolate hardens before you serve it. Now that the chocolate has hardened on the top, it is time to serve it up. So I just removed it from our baking dish and now you will just want to break it up. As you see, I am not cutting it in any particular fashion. I'm just breaking it with my hands. All I have to say about these toffee bars is if they intimidated you in any way, shape, or form, do not let them intimidate you. This recipe is unbelievably easy to make and it tastes like you spent hours and hours trying to make them. 
These cake batter cookies are so much fun to make. So to begin in my bowl right here, I'm adding one box, about 15 ounces of yellow cake mix. Next, you will be adding a third a cup of vegetable oil, two cracked eggs, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. That is seriously it. Just whisk these ingredients or mix these ingredients together. Now that these ingredients are well combined together, I'm going to put cling wrap over the top of this bowl and chill this dough in our refrigerator for at least an hour. Chilling the dough in the refrigerator will help these cookies be nice and fluffy in the end. Now that our dough is out of the refrigerator, it is time to place it onto our cookie sheet now. So I have my cookie sheet, I sprayed it with nonstick spray. I'm just getting a scoop of that dough, I'm flattening it just a little bit, and then placing Christmas sprinkles over the top. Or you could use any type of sprinkles you want, whatever time of year it is. And then I baked this on 350 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes. Here they are out of the oven. These cookies are absolutely fabulous. You cannot even tell that you used a shortcut by using a box cake mix for this recipe. They are that good. Now we're making this classic chocolatey peanut candy and this one is in the slow cooker so that is a total win-win. To my slow cooker I'm adding two pounds of white almond bark. Next add a four ounce Baker's German chocolate bar. I'm just adding that right in there. And then after that add 12 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips. And then the very last thing you will be adding on top is 28 ounces of dry roasted peanuts. Put the lid on top and cook this on low for one hour without touching it. Here we are an hour later. I'm going to give this a really good stir and then continue to cook this for an additional hour. But you do want to stir it every 15 minutes. After that cooking time in the slow cooker, it should look like this, perfectly melty and chocolatey. I lined my countertop with plenty of wax paper, so now you're going to take scoops of this peanutty chocolatey mixture and scoop it right onto that wax paper. Let the chocolate harden, it should take only about 20 minutes, and then these are ready to enjoy. Here's what they look like once they have hardened and they're ready to serve. This recipe is 100% fail proof. My mom used to make these all of the time when I was growing up and I used to love it so much. Now we're making these M&M cookies and they're my daughter's favorite. To my bowl, I'm adding one cup of regular sugar, one cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of softened butter, and then a half a cup of vegetable oil. Cream these ingredients together. Now that the mixture looks something like this, it's time to add your two cracked eggs in and then beat them until the mixture is fluffy. The rest of the ingredients you will be tossing in is about a half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then three cups of regular all-purpose flour. Beat this together until all of the ingredients are well combined. Now that our mixture looks like this, it's time to add in the M&Ms. You could use any color M&Ms you want, but since this is Christmas time, I'm just adding in the Christmas looking M&Ms, but you could add in seriously any M&Ms you want, depending on what time of year it is. You could even add the peanut butter M&Ms in or the peanut M&Ms, those would be so good. I added about a cup and a half of M&Ms in total. I mixed them for a little bit and then it was time to put these onto my cookie sheet. I did grease my cookie sheet with nonstick spray. I put a little scoop on there and then I put a few M&Ms on the very top. I baked this on 350 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes or until the edges were golden brown. Here they are out of the oven. These cookies are perfectly crisp on the outside and nice and fluffy and soft on the inside. Whenever we have family gatherings, my family always asks me to bring them just because these are that good. 
I have so many more videos like this on my channel, so make sure you're subscribed down below the video so you don't miss any more in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.